Well, World Quantum Day is celebrated each year on April 14th because 4.14 electron volts is the initial sequence of the Planck constant, which expresses the fundamental relationship between mass and frequency. The relationship between mass and frequency. The idea of God as a love frequency is really intrinsic to our community. But if the topic is new to you, or if you want a refresher, there's a science-based spirituality playlist on the current YouTube channel and a science-based spirituality magazine on Medium. Now, because so many progressive spiritual communities like The Current are rediscovering God as sort of more force than father, and because quantum physics is fundamental to our understanding of God, in my most authoritative medieval voice, I hereby declare that henceforth and forthwith, the first Sunday following April 14th of every year shall forever be known as World Quantum Sunday. If we can, we can consider it a celebration of God and physics. And since the photon is massless, an elementary particle, uh, a quantum of light, let's make World Quantum Sunday light. God is a continuous loop of creative revelation. Every scientific breakthrough is another glimpse of God's creativity, of the metaphysical mechanisms of parallel realities. I've been thinking about God's sort of infrastructure for decades, yet every time there's a new discovery about how the universe works, I'm overwhelmed with awe. Every new picture from the Webb Space Telescope fills me with sometimes uncontrollable joy because I know that I'm looking at God's palette of creative building blocks. Everything I see, even the tremendous cosmic galaxies, can be deconstructed into subatomic particles and quantum forces. That's the metaphysical foundation of the material world. It's a physical realm, but it's also weirdly spiritual, and it makes for a good analogy either way. Despite the immensity of the universe, the quantum god we discover in it is nearer than our own breath, is our skin, and the cells and the mitochondria within the cells, and their atoms and quarks and muons and strings. We should rejoice that the sciences have taken us so much closer to understanding the inner workings of our bodies, our minds, and the universe, because it is in the engines of creation that we discover God. And in that discovery, we recognize how remarkably present God is. World Quantum Sunday is fun for us at The Current because one of the primary ways, though certainly not the only one, that we imagine God is as the ultimate conscious frequency, a love frequency that quite naturally materializes into being. The relationship between frequency and mass is foundational to our understanding of God and reality, even though we usually talk about it with more spiritual language. The quantum spiritual lens is rapidly evolving. We're learning uh, astounding new information about how the universe works daily. And just as our ancestors' view of the cosmos influenced the biblical authors, our understanding of the natural world must do the same for 21st century people of faith. Continuing to read the Bible and think about God using concepts about the universe, government, politics, and religion from 3,000 and in some cases more than 5,000 years ago is increasingly difficult today, simply because we no longer have that ancient frame of reference. And thank God for new frames of reference. I mean, Jesus had no idea Einstein would discover that Energy and mass are equivalent and interchangeable, but I think Jesus would love that concept. I mean, think about it for a moment. Mass and energy are the same and interchangeable. So all mass, like you and I and Jesus, is energy. I think Jesus is the perfect example of energy as matter, of light becoming pure being. Jesus exemplifies what physics proves about all of us. 
We're made from light. So how can this knowledge not radically affect the way that we think of God? If we know that energy is the fundamental source of physical reality, we should understand then that God is not a being, but the essence of all being. God is the energy of reality. Suppose God is our source, more intimately and physically than we've imagined, even though Jesus exemplifies the idea. But in that case, we are all part of God, every kaleidoscopic human permutation of us. We are all born from the same foundational source, a source science implies is pure energy and faithful, belie faithful people believe is interactive. Thinking of God in a more universally quantum and scientifically informed way is tremendously helpful if we're trying to build interfaith bridges, which really we should all be doing. And I mean, let's just think about our own interactions for a moment. Uh, when, with how many people do you strike up a conversation about omers of mana these days? Now, how many people do you talk about the web telescope with? We have more inclusive, contemporary, and universal language available today. Language that makes God's presence more reasonable, more accessible, and more powerful. Let's embrace it and start using it because the implications are paradigm shifting. For example, since energy equals mass and we believe that God is somehow in or the being of that energy, then we are all created from God's essential energy. And if we think that way, that we're all single sourced, then we're all brothers and sisters. We are family, all of us, every single one of us all over the planet Earth without any exception. And in this way also, you're not merely my neighbor, you're my family. And, and I don't mean in a kumbaya spiritual sort of way. I mean, literally, physically, chemically, and atomically, we are related. We are God's brilliantly diverse physical being. Really, we're as related to one another as God is relational to us. And that is to say, utterly, totally, completely. Humans don't think of each other as one family because we've created a society based on exploiting our perceived differences. And also, let's face it, family means responsibility. And many of us just don't want that obligation, which is unfortunate because I think God demands us to be responsible for one another. And society certainly seems to be suffering from a lack of concern. The world can be such an oppressing place that our primary activity often necessarily becomes about self-preservation. So we live in a fight or flight psychosis that prevents us from accepting the truth about God that even science confirms all this material stuff, our blood, our skin, our muscles, the cells that comprise all of our fleshiness, it all begins first as pure, massless energy. Yeah. While the language of quantum physics might be new to us, we've certainly understood the premise for a very, very long time. Genesis chapter 1. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light. And so light appeared. God saw how good the light was and separated the light from the darkness. It turns out that when we get down to the most basic construct of what it means to be human, well, it really is all about the light. Amen. Our question today, how does thinking of humans as light being affect your view of yourself, of others, and our world? If we're all made from the same light.